something like that, okay? And then when Ian tells me, we can start. We can start. Start. Go for it. All right. <laughs> so we're going to talk to you today about um, financial aid, what you need to know about financial aid. Just very, very high level. I'm going to touch on a few um, of the key terminologies and when Ian tells the colleges you're talking to. We're going to talk about FAFSA. We'll talk a lot about that. Um, the different types of financial aid there are just to give you some ideas about what's out there, where you can maybe look for some financial aid, and then wrap it up with just informing you about something called special circumstances. So what is financial aid? Financial aid is any sort of financial assistance provided to the family to help pay for the child's education college expense. A lot of people think this is just free money, but it's not. It does include grants and scholarships that are free money, um, but also student loans, work study program, um, just a variety of different things. The, one of the most common things you're going to hear all colleges talk about, um, this will be one of the first things you hear the financial aid talk about, is the cost of attendance um, for that school. This number is different at every college. Um, I always like to put the word budget at the end of it because that's really exactly what it is. It's that college's budget and it gives you an idea of what it's going to cost for your student to attend there for one year. Um, so some of the things that are built into that cost of attendance budget are they fall under direct costs and indirect costs. So the direct costs are things that you will be billed for. Um, so like on your statement, your student statement, they're going to have these costs on there, tuition and fees for housing, meals. Um, sometimes people will put books over in that direct cost. At Benedictine, we do not. Um, so that falls into our indirect cost budget. Um, so those things are sometimes books, supplies, travel or transportation, what it costs the students to get back and forth um, to school, and the miscellaneous and personal expenses. I always use the example of um, maybe the student has an illness um, and they have to have medication while they're at school. We can always build that cost into their cost of attendance. So those are just Kind of things to remember. And so accessing financial aid. So how do we get financial aid? Um, there is an electronic form called the FAFSA. How many of you guys have heard of that? All the parents. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, how many of you have filled out a FAFSA? <laughs> yeah. so, um, the online form is going to look at different things like your household income, how many people are in your home, how many of those people go to college. Um, this thankfully is like it's an online form, thank goodness. Um, and this really, the purpose of this is to calculate the family's expected family contribution. And that number is what is given to colleges to help us build your, your student's financial aid package. Um, and so with the FAFSA, an important thing I always like to, I always encourage everybody to fill this out. A lot of families we see at Benedictine will say, um, I don't wanna fill it out, we're not gonna get any additional, we're not gonna qualify for any of these. Well, you might not qualify for free aid, but you will qualify for loans of some sort. Um, and you never know what might happen that you might need those loans. So I always recommend for families to fill out the FAFSA. And for example, at Benedictine, we use that AFC to award some of our institutional aid. We have a Raven grant that determines, um, that looks at a student's financial need, and that can only be found if the family fills out the FAFSA. Um, and so they are, it is an important document for most schools to have. Um, the FAFSA opens up October 1 of the prior year. So for a student starting in 22-23 next year, they would have started filling out their FAFSA in October 1 of 2021. So it's the prior year to where you, when your student is going to start. Um, within that FAFSA, just a couple of things I always like to mention. Um, in the FAFSA, when you go to enter your family's income or even the student's income, if the taxes have been filed, I always recommend to try the data retrieval tool because it is a direct link out to the IRS that pulls in your tax information and imports it all nice and there's no errors when it's typed in. <laughs> so it, it makes it really easy for both you guys and for the college, especially if that FAFSA is selected for verification. We don't really have to get any additional documentation from the family because it was imported from the IRS. Um, the other thing I always like to mention is the electronic signatures that it requires. In order to electronically sign the FAFSA, both a parent and the student will have to have an FSA ID and password. 
these can be there just you'll keep them <laughs> write them down keep them in a safe place because you will use this each year you fill out the fafsa for your parents um you can use the same one that you've used for your other children um so you can use the same one it's just you gotta you gotta remember them. write them down keep them in a safe spot um if not Chris. <laughs> yes, so I call it the circle of hell. If you've ever done a forgot your FSA ID and password, that's what happens. Um, so I tell my parents, I sit there on the phone with them, like, okay, get your pass, get your ID. Now go completely out of the website. Go back into the website with that ID and say you forgot your password. Get your password, go completely out and go back in. <laughs> Otherwise, it will honestly take you to different screens and you circle and you get frustrated and you get angry and then you don't even want to do the fast when you throw up your hands and say, I'm done. <laughs> and so just you have to be patient. So write it down and remember it um, for your students. Go ahead and get an um, email that is not your school email, a Yahoo account, a Gmail account, something like that. Because if you tie your FSA ID to your school email, your school email is going to disappear after you leave that school and you won't yep. be able to retrieve your stuff. So go ahead and get another email other than the one you use at school. Yep. Very important. So after that FAFSA is completed, after you submit it and sign it, do all that good stuff, the school is going to get your information in what we call an ICER. Um, you guys will get the information to the emails that you provide, <laughs> you'll get the information in what is called a student aid report. It's the exact same information. Honestly, I don't know why they call it two different things, but they do, because it's the exact same information. We are going to take that ICER, the college is going to take that ICER and use it to package your students financial aid. That's, we wait on, when those come in, that's, we just get them packaged and get them out. And so after we do that fast cut, and now we can come over here when the college will come over and say, okay, what's the student's financial need? And to determine that, we use this formula. All colleges will use this formula. Now, it's important to remember the cost of attendance will be different at any college you go to. Um, no one's cost of attendance is going to be the same. And so it takes that cost of attendance budget, it subtracts out the expected family contribution, and that gives us the students need number and that's used for determining eligibility for different types of, of um, programs financial aid programs so there's two main types of financial aid gift aid and self-help self-help aid gift aid is what everybody wants it's the free money you know scholarships grants those sort of things the self-help aid is um is financial aid that you have to do something for or do something because you got it so um student loans you have to pay those back after you, you know, get those and you graduate and do all that stuff. Um, work study, the student has to work to get those funding. So at Benedictine, um, it's, it's, I always point this out to whatever college your student is looking at, you'll, you're going to want to make sure you ask them about their work study program because it can be handled in a lot of different ways. Some apply it directly to the student's bill. Some give them a paycheck. So like at Benedictine, we give the students a paycheck for their hours worked in their work study. And so that, that's always something to just remember. So the two categories of financial aid, so we talked about types, now we're talking about categories, need-based and non-need-based. So need-based takes us back to that cost of attendance calculation. So there's federal programs within that need-based, state programs and institutional. So things such as Pell Grants, um, your subsidized student loan versus your unsubsidized, which will be on the non-need-based. Do you guys know the difference between the two of those loans? Um, yeah. So the difference is the subsidized loan, it does not accrue interest until six months after the student graduates or if they stop, if they attend less than part time. The unsubsidized loan is going to start accruing interest as soon as it's dispersed to the account. So that's the main difference between those two. So definitely the subsidized, if your student has that need for that loan, that's the better of the two loans to have if you, if you have to borrow. Um, on the non-need-based side of things, that's where you're looking at like your merit scholarships, academic merit scholarships, participation scholarships for athletics, clubs, you know, organizations, different things that the college will have. Um, you don't necessarily have to have any financial need in order to get those, those types of aid. And then um, just different places to get financial aid. Obviously, the federal government is the single, single largest provider of financial aid. 
But there's also different places that you're going to want to check into um, just to see if there's anything out there. So your state programs, for example, Benedictine participates um, in, for, with Kansas Comp. That's a, a grant for Kansas residents. Um, so definitely whatever college you guys are looking into, um, check to see if they have state funding. Um, sometimes you have to be a resident of that particular state to get that funding, but sometimes you don't. So um, it's always a good thing to just check into. And then your private sources. So this is a big one, um, especially like your local organizations, your businesses in town, um, just different places that may be offering scholarships. Um, uh, students should check into as many of those as they can, along with like civic organizations. If um, their dads are members of Knights of Columbus or um, Kiwanis, if they were scouts when they were growing up, or maybe still are, there's a lot of scholarship opportunities um, through different places. And then definitely check the and like your employer. So both parents and students. I forgot to mention that in the first one. We have several students that like Chick Fil A has McDonald's. scholarship programs. McDonald's yeah. has scholarship programs. So wherever you're employed, both the student and the parent. Definitely check just to see if there's any sort of scholarship or tuition assistance, um, anything that the employer may offer. Those are, are great ways to kind of look. And then we'll wrap it up with a process called special circumstances. I just like to touch on this because um, within the last two years, a lot of things have happened um, with COVID and, and families' financial makeup. And then, you know, some people have lost their jobs and and things like that. This is a process that the Department of Education gives colleges the ability to do when a family submits a FAFSA. So let's say I submitted a FAFSA, um, but I recently got a divorce. And so I have this two years ago tax information that I have to send in that has my ex-husband's income. Uh, I don't want to that's not there anymore. So this is what that process is for. We can remove that income out of there. So your FAFSA has a better representation of where you currently are financially. So there's different things that you can that we can look at. Um, not all colleges look at every one of these things. It's a very, it's a, it's a very audited process, <laughs> but they also allow the school to kind of pick what they're going to look at. So we at Benedictine will look at things such as like um, private tuition expense. There are a lot of families that pay that. Um, and so it, it's beneficial for us to, to look at that. Um, if you have unusual dependent care expenses, um, if you have elderly parents that live in the home with you that you're providing support for, um, let's say you had excessive medical expenses, those are different things we can take a look at. Um, so it's important if you have that going on, you will want to talk to that school's financial aid office. This isn't something that we go and look for. Like, I don't look at someone's fast and think, oh, well, let me see if something happened to them. You know, let's see what's going on. It's a process that would be initiated by you to the financial aid office. So that's always something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. And then that is really where, yep, if you have questions, if you have any questions, that's, yeah. yeah. Um, where can you apply scholarships? So you know, that is the very first question both times. Yes. <laughs> so good for you. Um, so you can anywhere, really. Like, um, so we have the college. So Chris brought up a good point last time. So each college usually has a, a, a sheet or a page on their website that have scholarships links to different scholarship organizations. There's a really good organization called Going Merry, M-E-R-R-Y, like Merry Christmas. Um, and they don't spam you. A lot so that's a really good place to look for scholarships if you do go out there and just say oh look scholarships and you're googling um set up a different email for those because you're going to get a lot of spam you might find something really useful but you are going to get a lot of spam going married isn't going to do that um, and then um always check with your school cool. counselor um, mm -hmm. they should have a list like um i said on a board mm -hmm. for a foundation here within the Atchison community and that's the very first place we go to tell them about the scholarship is your school counselor mm -hmm. and so um just <laughs> just check in with them they should have a listing of especially local scholarships that you can that you can apply for okay um and i always recommend to kind of be thinking of that yeah, um, really, because there's going to be some application deadlines. There's going to be uh, so application deadlines. There's essays that go with most of them. So definitely have kind of an idea of that your junior. Yeah, and another student suggested um, once you hit high school when you're a freshman, start writing down everything that you did. 
uh, any award that you want, anything, because you're going to forget all that by the time it comes to do this. You're going to be crunched. You're like, oh, I don't know. I forget. And as soon as you push that submit button, you're like, oh, I, I forgot about that. So just start making like a little resume um, of things you've done in high school so you are ready to apply for things. Yep. Any other questions? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. So, like, for international students, how would they apply, like, for scholarships? So, um, well, so for international students, most of them don't have the ability to fill out this FAFSA that we're talking about. And so you would really be talking to your school um, that you're looking at going to, uh, along with the local organizations so you're not through the counselor. Um, so that the the stuff that you see here that would like the FAFSA, the Pell Grant, all of that stuff, that wouldn't be eligible for an international student, but um, well, for most international students. But um, you would definitely just check with the school that you're interested in and see what they have to offer. And then as well as those places mm -hmm. like this. Yeah, the different scholarships. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Moms that have filled out the FAFSA, do you have any advice? No, I didn't want. I refused to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I make the joke. My husband has a PhD, and I was like, "Hey, fill this out." And like, you know, half hour later, he throws the computer at me and said, "Come on, I So you just have to be patient. It gets a lot easier. It really does. And call the school. Well, and yes, because we talk um, people through the fast yeah, all we, the time. Yeah, because you know we let, we see it every day, and so um, sometimes you forget like sometimes i have to remind myself okay this is very new for them mm -hmm. you know even though we've answered this question a hundred times um mm -hmm. it's very new for for the person we're talking to right now mm -hmm. so definitely don't be afraid to ask questions that is one of the most important things i think for the students too yeah um don't be afraid to ask any questions that you have when you're going through this process we had um some people asking last session about how to select a college like where do you even start to kind of look at a college and um Chris brought up a good point. She said, you know, just go visit. If you think there's any interest, just go visit that place. Um, yep. When you're on a family vacation, oh, look, let's drive through there. Let's, mm -hmm. let's see if they'll come see us. You, like I told my children, I said, when you get to the place where you belong, you will feel it. You will know. You're like, this is me. This mm -hmm. is my people. This mm -hmm. is what I want. And so that's what you want to look for. I mean, there's lots of things you have to juggle. Um, but you need to be happy where you are because you're going to succeed when you're happy. Very yep. early this session. Oh, yeah, go ahead. When do you, when do you think would be like a good age to start looking and like visiting campuses? Freshman year, you can start. Yeah, freshman year. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Anytime you want, yeah. any place that you are interested yeah. in, mm -hmm. um, I there's no real set time no, that you yeah. need to go. So. Mm -hmm. Because you can always change your mind, or you think when you were fresh when you went to place like that, ah, and then you know when you're starting to narrow it down, you're like, you know what? Can we go back there? I think I like that place. 